Minnesota legislator Ilhan Omar took center stage in the U.S. Congress Wednesday, leading the questioning of a senior U.S. diplomat. Um, isn't it time to be pushing for an arms embargo? Molly Fee, and the Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs, was asked about U.S. action regarding Ethiopia and Somalia. Omar, a Somali immigrant, has been serving in Congress for almost five years. She is known for asking tough questions and taking outspoken stands on U.S. foreign policy in Africa. When will the um, secretar secretary um, complete the legal review of um, atrocity designation in regards to Ethiopia? We've been waiting for months. Uh, our primary focus has been on trying to engage diplomatically in the many ways uh, that are available to us to uh, reach an end to the conflict, uh, which would uh, obviously result in immediate end of the atrocities. Um, and so we have decided to refrain at the current moment from making a public determination in order to allow space and time to see if the talks that are currently underway can make progress. Omar asked what the U.S. is doing about the humanitarian situation in Ethiopia and the region. Fee mentioned a long list of partners Washington is engaging to try and provide assistance to those affected by the conflict. There's also um, increasing reports that the United Arab Emirates, Turkey, China, Iran are, arm are arming the Ethiopian government with drones and other weapons. Um, isn't it time to be pushing for an arms embargo? And in the meantime, shouldn't we be pushing our allies to stop arming Abiy's government? Absolutely, the issue of arms supplies to Ethiopia is a component of our diplomacy with regional and international allies. And the issue of an arms embargo is one of the many elements of the discussion taking place in New York and the Security Council. Mm -hmm. um, I, I believe uh, Ethiopia is too big to fail, um, and uh, it's the, the possibility of it destabilizing the whole region um, just breaks my heart. Um, speaking of the East African region, uh, we know that Somalia um, has failed to have elections. Um, for over a year now. Uh, that conflict is still is happening. Um, what is the U.S. position on trying to pressure the Somali government uh, to engage um, in, in a process that allows for proper elections to take place? So we agree with you absolutely that the elections are critical, first to complete the parliamentary elections so that the stage is set to move to the presidential elections. That is a component of our engagement with the government, all parties in Somalia, and with all the many regional and inter international actors who are also active in Somalia, so that there's a unified message. Uh, we're also looking now, as you know, the Amazon mandate is about to expire, and we're looking at how that mandate can be reconfigured uh, to support both the political process and the fight against al-Shabaab. Uh, so uh, there is no neglect of that situation. It remains tough to convince the parties uh, to move in the right direction. There has been some progress in the parliamentary elections, uh, but there needs to be more and it needs to be done more quickly uh, to help uh, Somalia get on a path to self-sufficiency. What, what mechanisms are we utilizing to make sure that uh, Somalia understands what our position is in, in regards to this and, and takes the proper uh, course? I, I think uh, one of the lessons that we learned from Afghanistan, uh, that I personally learned and that Secretary Blinken learned, uh, doing more of the same is not necessarily sufficient. Uh, so there's a real effort to, to make clear uh, to the Somalis that they cannot depend indefinitely on international assistance and that they need to play a role in leading and managing their own country. Fee's comparison between Somalia and Afghanistan left some viewers with an uncomfortable feeling. ADN-TV will continue to report on political and security developments in East Africa and around the world.